Hi, and I want to go through a few job roles which are really common in the IT industry. So we're really thinking about the type of skills needed for these jobs, what attributes are going to be especially important. So the last video I went through loads and loads and loads of attributes. We're going to apply some here, but the ones I'm going to give are not the only ones. So please do think of your own attributes that you think are going to be relevant. So starting with a network manager. A network manager is responsible, as the name would suggest, for setting up and maintaining the computer network. So setting up means you are installing the hardware, designing the network, deciding on the topology and the wires used and the hardware devices you're gonna install. Maintaining is making sure it's all working, fixing issues when they come up and upgrading it over time. So this will require knowledge of both network hardware and software. We looked at quite a lot of network hardware, we looked at network software so protocols our software you've got to understand both to understand how the network is working and there are lots of qualifications focused on networking of course this one we've covered bits and pieces but there are maybe formal programs you might take when you're working to become qualified to be a network manager in terms of some of the non-technical skills which are quite important i would suggest problem solving is a major major skill because things go wrong and it's your job to fix it, right? If a network goes down or something breaks, nobody else is gonna fix it. It's gonna be you that has to fix it. And if you're working quite a big company, quite a big organization, that can be pressuring because everyone's expecting you to work. Nowadays, if the Wi-Fi goes down or email goes down, people start panicking, it's your job to fix it. And so that can lead to pressure. And in terms of maintaining, to be effective at maintaining a network, you've got to be really organized, you've got to know when to upgrade stuff, you've got to know when to replace certain items. And so being organized is important as well. That might prevent a lot of the issues which might cause you to be under pressure if you are organized. I will say note managers tend to be quite senior roles. In a very, very small organization, you might be the only person working on the network. In quite a big one, it can be, like I say, quite a senior role where you are managing other people. The word manager refers to you managing the network. But if it is a big company, inevitably you'll be managing other people as well. And so leadership would be important too. The second main role, which is really, I suppose, a slightly more broad version of a network manager is just a IT technician. So an IT technician is quite a general role and it will vary a lot depending on what exactly you're working on. But generally speaking, technicians will set up and again maintain the computer systems of an organization. So installing stuff in the first place and also over time fixing, upgrading the hardware in particular. So in fact, I say hardware in particular, this will involve both hardware and software as well. Again, there are certain qualifications you might be able to undertake, which are specific to the particular system you are working on. But definitely a key aspect of this role is troubleshooting. So fixing and finding and resolving issues with the computers. And this will mean interacting with clients the clients could be people outside of your organization. They could be people working with you, your colleagues, but people come to you asking for help. It's your job to fix it. So in terms of the non-technical attributes needed, I would say again, things like patience. It can be frustrating. You might get somebody asking for help for such a basic, stupid reason. Things go wrong again and again. That can be really frustrating. And so being patient is important. That's where you're being really calm and not getting frustrated. And because of this being determined, often troubleshooting can take a few goes. If you give up the first time you try something which doesn't work, that's gonna be really, really tough working in this job. You've gotta keep going, keep trying, trying to figure stuff out until things are fixed. And finally, dependability is essential. Because people are coming to you for help, you've got to be trusted by people in the organization. If there becomes a reputation, that you are really slow or lazy or don't really try very hard, that is not gonna be a positive outcome for anybody. So if you're dependable, you'll be working really hard to fix these issues, being really positive and getting stuff done. Programmers are another common role in IT, specifically computer science. Programmers are writing code to develop software. So they're focused on software, they all know about hardware to a certain extent, but it's mostly software whereas technicians and managers are sort of a mixture of both. So writing code on a computer screen, you've got to know a programming language like Python or Java. 
and there are loads more. These are not quite as detailed as learning something like English or Arabic or French. They're not full languages. You could learn it in a few days. But to get good at a language like Python or Java can take months, if not years and years of practice. So fairly specialized. If you don't know these languages, you're not going to become a programmer straight away. So in terms of the attributes of game, which are not so technical, team working. It's rare for programmers nowadays to work on their own, usually as part of a team. You can't make a big program on your own. You've got to work as a team. Being resilient, programming is frustrating, as you might have found from experience. If you try and run some code and you get errors, that can be really frustrating. If you are resilient, you keep going, you don't take things personally, you don't feel too bad. If things don't work first try, you're really being determined and persevering. I also think in many cases being good at maths is fairly important for programming. You don't have to be a genius at maths, but having some numerical skills is important, especially understanding of things like binary and hexadecimal. Now somewhat related to programming, we have web designers. So web designers, again, as the name would suggest, create website designs which meet client requirements. So usually the web designer will get approached by a person or a business and be asked to make a website or design a website based on what they want. So requirements are what the client wants. You can't just make your own website, you've got to follow what they want, which is difficult because it involves some creativity, but also you might be quite restricted in what the person wants you to do. And web design can be just more artistic and more about the layout and the coloring and the images, but it may also involve coding too. If you are working on your own, or on quite small projects, you might do the whole thing, designing and coding, but equally in big projects, you might only do the actual design, which is sort of your first stage. So key attributes again include things like, in this case, being creative. So trying to have different websites. Websites can be quite boring unless you think of something different. Listening skills, because you're working with clients, you've got to listen to what they say. If you make a website, which is completely different to what they wanted, that's not going to go down well. And finally, being organized. Usually there'll be a time scale involved. The company won't wait forever to have a website. They want stuff done by a certain date. And you've got to be organized to be able to do it in time. And the final role I want to cover are animators. So animators, as you'll probably know, will be someone who's an artist who is making moving images. You've got lots of images moving, um, so it becomes like a video. So usually, again, they're working with clients. Clients will ask for a particular thing, but again, they're putting a more creative spin on what the client is asking for. So the client usually won't tell them exactly what to do. You might have to think of a slight adaptation yourself to make it a bit different. Now, usually this will involve using something like graphics tablet or be different animation software. So you've got to know how to use particular bits of software and also hardware like graphics tablets. Now, attributes include things like being creative. Of course, if you're drawing the animations, you've got to be quite good at art. Not all animation is hand-drawn. It might be 3D generated, but involves definitely some creativity. But also self-motivation. A lot of animators work on their own. And so having to get started and keep working on it requires quite a lot of inner motivation. I suspect lots of it is quite fun and enjoyable, but I suspect lots of it is not. You're doing very, very similar stuff over and over again. That requires a lot of self-motivation, I would say. 